Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for attending this webinar from Secure Cyber Defense entitled, When Remote Workers Return to the Office. I'm going to uh, kind of share my screen right now. I'm gonna share the right screen. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's kind of get started. Uh, there will be a recording of the broadcast, so um, even if you didn't get to attend, uh, we'll send out the uh, we'll send out the slides. So my name is Sean Baldwin. I'm the CEO of Secure Cyber Defense, and I will be your moderator today. So who is Secure Cyber Defense? So just a little bit about who we are. I know uh, there are a lot of people on the call who are not familiar with us or it may be the first time you've heard our name. Uh, we are an experienced cybersecurity uh, firm located in just outside Dayton, Ohio in Miamisburg. Uh, I founded the company back in 2015. Uh, we span multiple industries. Concentration in uh, industries though would be financial, manufacturing, and SLED are probably our top three. Uh, we are an, an affordable cybersecurity only firm. We, are, we do employ just US-based staff and uh, we, we don't offshore anything and, everything we do, all of our systems and all of our services are based here in the United States. And just a little bit about what we do. Uh, these are some actual screenshots of our SOC and uh, our employees, so these are not stock photos. Uh, we are 100% a cybersecurity uh, firm. We do not do any IT or MSP, typical MSP type work. We offer managed firewall solutions, email and SIM. Uh, we do also offer a 24-7 uh, forensic response unit that is employed here based out of this building. Uh, we have about 17 full-time employees and uh, we, we also are DFARS and CMMC experts. Uh, so if you're in the manufacturing and aerospace uh, fields, uh, that would be important to you. We are also a Fortinet advanced partner. So all the solutions and uh, things that we deploy and manage uh, are Fortinet technology related items. So just a little bit about the agenda today, as soon as I can get GoToWebinar to respond. Uh, we're gonna uh, just sneak in a quick cyber threat update. Uh, and then uh, as promised, from an agenda standpoint, we're gonna talk about uh, devices returning back to the network, uh, some end user training and policy issues, laptop cleaning recommendations, and then what in the world do we do if we have to return home again? So just some hot topics real quick uh, that we've been addressing uh, this week and have become some pretty important items. Cisco uh, has a vulnerability uh, to their ASA platform as well as some other uh, Cisco related products. This particular vulnerability is of interest because it will and can uh, uh, introduce some downtime to remote workers. Uh, so uh, if you are using the ASA platform, we highly recommend that you hop out to the Cisco website and uh, make sure that your device uh, isn't vulnerable and if it is, uh, to apply those updates accordingly. Uh, we received some information yesterday that the uh, Israeli water system was disrupted, uh, likely by Iran, uh, but Iran says they don't do any hacking activities, so I guess it wasn't them. Um, just something to call out though, uh, so the, the water system uh, was uh, apparently compromised by an external facing device that had some weak credentials. Uh, so we just bring that up to, um, uh, to give light to uh, critical infrastructure. So if you're in the uh, public safety, 911, water, power, sewer, that type of thing, uh, to just uh, be aware of those situations. Uh, and, and, and take the, uh, the recommended uh, precautions to protect those external facing systems. Intel had uh, released this week that there were some opportunities uh, for devices that have Thunder, Thunderbolt uh, connections uh, that they can be compromised. We're gonna talk more about this, not on this call, but we're gonna uh, put out a webinar where we can uh, grab our Intel guys and actually get some more information about this. This is going to be a very uh, unique situation where somebody is going to have to grab devices uh, physically uh, and make some alterations to them. It does call into an account and into light uh, cleaning crews and people that have after hours access to your equipment uh, that may be able to uh, take the device to someone uh, that could perform that, that task. Um, 
but that was information that was released earlier this week. And of course, it's Patch Tuesday, uh, so yesterday, I guess I'll make it Patch Wednesday, uh, but Patch Tuesday was yesterday, Microsoft, and, and now the piling on of third-party software companies are, are also releasing their uh, so Adobe and Microsoft. Microsoft wanted their uh, biggest patch uh, cycles, 111 patches, security vulnerabilities, uh, not 111 patches, but 111 vulnerabilities um, have been fixed in this release. Uh, so we do recommend that you test patches, obviously, uh, but um, Secure Cyber Defense does recommend a monthly patch cycle. Uh, so just make sure that you're patching those devices, testing those patches, and more importantly, putting your devices on a reboot schedule. Uh, so we, we see very often that patches are deployed, but reboots aren't occurring. Uh, and uh, that very often will not apply the patch all the way. So just because it's been patched um, and you haven't rebooted means that there is a possibility that uh, the patch could not be uh, applied accordingly. And uh, still, uh, to this day, uh, some of the most common things that we find uh, that get organizations in trouble, one is lack of a patching, uh, a mature patching cycle. Uh, patching, patching quarterly probably is not going to work nowadays, uh, so patching monthly. Device misconfiguration, so we still find that uh, firewalls and UTM devices and, and, uh, and related equipment uh, is being purchased and deployed, however, they're misconfigured. Uh, so uh, device and cloud misconfigurations, things like Office 365 and Amazon Web Service and Azure, uh, making mistakes and and uh, and not applying security configurations correctly, uh, could you could lead you into a false sense of security. Uh, you could have a, a a very capable cloud service or device, but the fact that it's misconfigured is going to leave you vulnerable. Uh, so just just make sure that you're taking proper precautions to uh, make sure that those services and devices are configured correctly. Later on this month, we will be um, reviewing the Center for Internet Security and US CERT um, have come out with some more guidelines on securing, uh, for example, your Office 365 environments. Uh, so we, we will do a follow-up um, uh, webinar on those recommendations and go over those recommendations uh, and answer any questions. If you have questions, there is a, a, a Q&A piece uh, portion of GoToWebinar uh, uh, somewhere on your screen. Uh, so if you've got questions, uh, you can go ahead and put those in there uh, and we'll review those uh, so that you don't forget. Go ahead and enter those questions as they come up and then uh, we'll certainly get all those uh, get all those answered for you. So I like webinars to be also free consulting. So if there's anything that we can answer or anything we can help you with, certainly put that in there and uh, we'll do that for you. So how do you stay up to date with cybersecurity? My goodness, everything going on. And uh, Well, Secure Cyber Defense, I believe, has uh, some great options uh, for you to stay up to date. Number one is uh, subscribing to our Twitter feed, uh, at SecDef LLC. Uh, you can also subscribe and, uh, and hop on to my personal Twitter feed, uh, where uh, between those two feeds, uh, there's quite a bit of information that comes out as far as threat information. This is not salesy information. So when I stay up to date, this is this is not staying up to date on what Secure Cyber Defense is selling. This is intelligence. This, these are opportunities for you to stay in the loop on cybersecurity intelligence. Uh, so uh, Twitter, those accounts, are uh, sec, uh, Secure Cyber Defense does have a YouTube site now. Uh, where we're providing weekly updates. And now pretty soon, uh, we're gonna be doing a podcast and some other regular uh, feeds. So the problem is that we can't just do updates weekly because the information changes so often. Uh, so we're going to be doing these updates uh, via YouTube um, a little more frequently, uh, just to make sure that we're getting the information out there for you to see. So you can hop over to YouTube and just do a search for Secure Cyber Defense LLC and you'll see my mug and, uh, and be able to subscribe to the channel. Uh, email alerts. So if you would like to get our email alerts, uh, you can send an email to sales at secdef.com. Just because that's a sales email address does not mean that the other person on the other end is going to try and sell you something. Uh, we would just like to get you, uh, that's just how our, our workflow works. Uh, we'll get you uh, subscribed to those email alerts where you can also uh, get some late breaking news on uh, any advisories or, or things that come 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 available, as well as US CERT. So uh, you can subscribe to the US CERT site for free. 
and get access to, I'm going to call that more high level critical information um, with, without much dialogue to it. So it's not, not very personable, uh, but if uh, like our feeds. Uh, so if you'd like to just get that without the, the personalized uh, explanation and those types of things, US CERT is definitely a great website that you can, uh, that you can hop out to and, uh, and certainly learn more. All right, so uh, let's get right into the uh, into the content. So we've got all these devices that have been remote, and uh, people are just steadily trying to come back, right? Uh, so Secure Cyber Defense uh, Office uh, opened May 4th, and we are back to work practicing all the precautions necessary uh, by all the different governmental entities. And uh, so, what? But what do we do with the devices as they come back? Um, so let's talk about that just for a little bit. So one of the things that we highly recommend is uh, is not just allowing those devices to come back in and just plug in and go. Uh, so we certainly uh, recommend uh, creating a VLAN or some type of side network uh, where the device can certainly get internet access, uh, but we want to temporarily quarantine the device to just make sure uh, that they've had a full system scan, that it's we're checking it for uh, for viruses. Uh, you know these devices left and went to a network to which you have no control over. Uh, so we just want to make sure that those devices are clean uh, before we introduce them back to the network where they can get access to uh, servers and other services. Um, this is actually um, not only is this a recommendation for devices returning to the network. This is actually a great recommendation for uh, your network as it exists now. Uh, so uh, maybe setting up uh, some type of quarantine VLAN or quarantine uh, network where if a, if a device is suspected of having something, uh, being able to maybe uh, switch that device to a VLAN quickly uh, that gets it isolated and off the corporate network, uh, but onto a network where additional investigation can happen. Inspecting equipment, so we want to be able to physically inspect that equipment. It's 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 been out of our control for a while. Um, if it's uh, we we've, we've heard uh, people taking desktops, and not not all of these devices are laptops. So we're gonna make sure that we check the device for things like key loggers and USB devices that may be plugged into the device that um, maybe we don't recognize or certainly didn't leave with that installed on it. Uh, we're going to inspect the equipment to make sure that there's no damage and that the equipment is in good shape. It hasn't been dropped. Uh, there's no cracked screens. Uh, so, you know, just making sure, especially if these are corporate assets, making sure that the uh, the, the device did come back in good shape uh, and it's and it's in a good state to uh, to to return back to network operations. I did mention using your antivirus system to perform a full system scan. Uh, to just make sure that that device didn't come in contact with something while it was remote. Uh, important to evaluate software inventory. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're not just assuming that all devices have no administrator access. Certainly, we'd, we advocate for that and we'd love for that to happen, but we understand that that might not be the case. So, uh, while the cat's away, was it the cat's away, the mice will play? Uh, so uh, there is a possibility that maybe when that device was remote and it was out of our control, that maybe the user uh, downloaded some software, installed some applications on the on the device that we're not aware of. Uh, so maybe using your, uh, if you use a um, RMM system or some type of uh, device inventory system that's running, maybe SpiceWorks or uh, ConnectWise or Auto, you know whatever whatever you might have, um, just making sure that you are taking an inventory of those devices and uh, that they have the same software uh, that they left with and certainly nothing more uh, that hasn't been approved by the IT department. Uh, obviously a good way to allevi alleviate this as, a, as an issue is to restrict the administrative rights um, of the device, um, but realizing that that's easier said than done, uh, just make sure that you check the software inventory. And then of course, uh, uh, you know, Deep packet inspection is something uh, that we definitely want to recommend moving forward. If you are not familiar with SSL inspection or deep packet inspection and what that means, you know, this uh, webinar is not a, a, a session about Fortinet technology. Certainly we are a Fortinet vendor and some of this does apply. 
DPAC and inspection applies to just about any fire, any UTM firewall that you might have, whether you've got a WatchGuard or a Palo Alto or a, you know, a Meraki. Um, so looking into deep pack and inspection and making sure these devices have it when it when it comes back, some, this might be a good opportunity to introduce that. And coincidentally, um, we are running a webinar next Wednesday. Is it next Wednesday or Thursday? It's the 19th. Um, and we're going to talk about deep pack and inspection. It's actually next Tuesday, um, and and how to how to enable that. Um, we will. Uh, uh, I believe in our email uh, blast, we did have a link for that deep pack and inspection webinar. Uh, so I highly recommend that you attend that because this is this is a big deal um, and something that uh, that we are going to be pressing as an organization. So those are just some examples of some things that we should be looking at when devices are returning back to the network. So some other things, your users have been gone for a little bit, and uh, you know maybe this is a good uh, a good opportunity to get some things back in front of them. Uh, let's talk about end user training and policy just for a few minutes. I know it's a boring topic. Um, maybe this is a really good opportunity to review security awareness training with your users. Uh, if you don't already have an automated system like Know Before or or something of that nature. Uh, certainly, this is a good opportunity to uh, deploy something like that. Many of your uh, end user or security awareness training systems have training modules built into them uh, that maybe cover topics more specifically, like um, how to, you know, how to stay secure while you're remote. Uh, we do have a YouTube training video. If you hop out to our YouTube site, there is some videos on uh, remote remote worker security that you might want to take a look at. Um, maybe even talking about some operational security topics in the military wor world, because we do some work um, with DOD contractors, obviously, with doing the uh, DFARS work that we do. Um, this is called OPSEC. Um, it's it shortened, meaning operational security. And what does that mean? Well, that means educating your users on, at the end of the day, um, you know, cleaning their desk and making sure that that files are secured and locked up and that passwords aren't visible. You know, just walking through those those security topics with your end users and making sure that they are aware that at the end of the day, um, that that other other people might have access to their desk and they may be able to see something. So, um, just review reviewing those topics with your employees and making sure that they are aware on their responsibilities for operational security. Maybe re refreshing and and going over the acceptable use policy. This might be a good opportunity. Uh, to get that policy in front of your users and make sure that they understand, you know, what they can and can't do. These devices went went home, and you know, uh, we pot potentially. I know I've addressed it here on one of the other bullet points, but these devices could have been used by the kids. Uh, that might be something um, that you might want to address in your acceptable use policy. Uh, that in a remote worker type situation, uh, that the em employee is is to, um, you know, re reduce the amount of non-employee access to the device and, and maybe specifically call out, you know, that uh, that unauthorized personnel are, are, are not permitted to use these devices. Um, maybe uh, developing a remote worker policy. Uh, maybe, you know, after at the end of this, as a certainly as an organization, um, I would recommend a, a debrief on, uh, you know, how, how did the remote worker situation work. Maybe we need a remote worker policy now that specifically addresses the do's and don'ts and, and the things um, you know that are acceptable and not acceptable. Um, I, again, I say addressing personal use uh, and, and having kids and, and family members you know use devices is, is probably not authorized. And then uh, using things like uh, you know SurveyMonkey or Teams has a, a polar uh, option. And maybe just polling your end users and saying, how was the experience? What what did you like? What did you not like? How did it work? How did it not work? What can we do better? Um, you know, one of the things that I think is a reality is that we may have to do this again. Um, organizations may be working into a situation where regular work at home uh, options might be available. Uh, so this is certainly something that isn't going to go away um, and something that we probably need, need to dig in deeper uh, to uh, to uncover some more um, ways on how to make this better. And then uh, how do we keep these devices clean? So, you know, we've been talking a lot about, um, uh, you know, laptops, and, and I did mention that, you know, we are aware that desktops went home and, 
you know, really this applies all the way around, right? So cleaning the screen, how do you, how do you clean a, a laptop screen? Well, certainly the worst thing you can do is, is squirt Windex on them. So anything that's got like a chemical or ammonia uh, back into it um, is, is going to potentially harm uh, the screen. Uh, these screens are um, a, a special uh, form of glass, and, uh, and and some of them even may even have plastic overlays. So the absolute worst thing you can do is is take a harsh chemical like Windex and apply it onto the screen. Really, all you have to do is just uh, use uh, some uh, some a, a a cloth and put some water on it and just kind of wipe it down and and uh, the screen that is. And, uh, and clean the fingerprints and things you know, like that off the screen. Uh, with the device fully powered down, uh, you can take something like a Clorox wipe or you know, some type of uh, solution that maybe you could take some bleach and water solution. Um, you know, I've, we've seen these uh, uh, you know, other, other types of uh, cleaning, like natural cleaning type things, like, um, gee, what am I thinking of? Like thieves, uh, all that would probably be fine uh, for for keep you know wiping down a keyboard. But the key, the key is to turn the device off. Do not do do not clean the keyboard with the device on. Don't forget about all sides of the key, of, of the device. So don't focus on just cleaning the screen and the keyboard. Make sure that if you're going to take a Clorox wipe, make sure that you're grabbing the bottom and all the touch surfaces on a on a fairly regular basis. Uh, introducing a regular cleaning schedule, um, making sure that maybe at the end of the day, uh, this could be part of your remote remote worker policy that the device is wiped down. Um, maybe consider docking stations uh, and and doing like maybe replaceable keyboards and mice. Um, you know, key, <laughs> keyboards are probably some of the most disgusting. Keyboards and mice are probably some of the most disgusting things on a desk. And uh, you know, there was an organization that I worked for um, a while back. And uh, we had a policy that like every six months or every year that we would actually replace the keyboards and mice because they were so uh, they were so dirty. And um, and, you know, depending on the environment you work in, this you could not just be working in a clean office environment. Maybe you've got devices on a manufacturing floor. Um, I, I, when I at, at a couple jobs, I had uh, I had devices that were in uh, I worked for a park district and these devices would just get. They would be sitting out in the shop and would just, you know, mice would hang out in there and poop on them. And there were, it was disgusting. And uh, so we had to have a regular cleaning schedule. And maybe even, you know, in a, in a deployment scenario, um, using a cleaning kit or deploying a cleaning kit and putting that together for your employees, maybe it would contain like, um, you know, a small thing of wipes and, uh, you know, some, uh, a small can of canned air or something and making sure that our employees have, you know, the necessary tools and things that they need to keep this, these devices clean. And even in a non-deployment type scenario, um, you know, that's something that we can certainly give all of our employees. Maybe they don't all need access to a kit, but maybe there's a section in the, in the office, in the closet where they can come and that's got a specific area carved out for cleaning your laptop or cleaning your desktop type of thing. So um, obviously making sure that devices are clean is something that we're very, uh, you know, we're very interested in, in pursuing. All right, so what if we return back? So what if we have to go back to a situation where we're re remotely working from home again? Well, one of the things that we noticed and this is all lessons learned stuff is bandwidth was all over the all over the uh, the map, meaning that how many times did you how many times did you get into like a Teams video meeting or something and notice that some people had what appeared to be really good bandwidth and their video looked nice and their audio was good and then there was that person that looked like uh, you know Max Headroom from the 1980s right so their their video was all choppy and it was blurry and uh, you know it seemed like turning the video off improved well. You know, there were bandwidth issues, right? So either the employee has really poor bandwidth, maybe they're in a remote area, um, maybe what was likely the case in most situations is the family was all home. So everybody was home and everybody was on the internet. So you know, if three or four people in a house with a 100 meg connection are, are surfing the internet and using uh, YouTube and, and Netflix, there's no bandwidth left over for remote working. 
So um, one of the things that we noticed, and, and we did some investigation about this, is that you can actually get another internet connection at your house that's business grade. Uh, so one of the things that we're going to start offering to our customer base is the ability to contact us and we will actually help you uh, locate bandwidth at your house and do some shopping for you and actually make some recommendations on having a separate business grade connection installed. Now this isn't gonna be for everybody, right? We're certainly not gonna go out as a company and buy uh, business grade internet connections for everybody at their house. However, there could be some very key people, maybe, um, maybe senior level people, C-level people, um, maybe you know, some of your key IT and security folks that are working remote uh, that would have the benefit and, and, and certainly the business need for having an, uh, a, a separate internet connection that was dedicated to them uh, so that they didn't have to fight and, and uh, for bandwidth at the house with other, with other family members. So bandwidth evaluations is, is something definitely that has to be looked at. Wireless options. So what, what was the wireless setup um, at, 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 at the house? Um, so uh, in the next slide, we're going to introduce a new product that Secure Cyber Defense is going to offer. Probably it's the only time I'm going to sell something here, but I do want to mention it because I think it's unique um, and, and something uh, that we have been testing, and I think it's a great product, so I'm excited to show you that. What did the home office setup look like? Was the, did the employee need a stand-up desk? Um, was their chair adequate? You know, there's, there's a lot that goes into remote workers and, uh, and evaluating what experience they had in uh, you know, we're not HR people and we're not attorneys. So, you know, I can't tell you, you know, what ergonomic chair they need and if that's necessary, those types of things. Um, but it is something that we evaluated with our staff, obviously, in making sure that uh, their home office experience was the best possible um, and that they had the equipment necessary for them to perform their job at the same or more, um, uh, you know, ways that they could uh, that they could do it here. Uh, Deploying multi-factor, uh, so we, we, we did see a lot of organizations at the onset of this uh, certainly purchase a lot of, uh, for, in the Fortinet world, they're called Forta, Forta tokens or multi-factor authentication. Uh, we've actually made some improvements to that system internally uh, for our customer base uh, in, in deploying things like uh, cloud tokens, uh, which are phenomenal. Uh, but if, if multi-factor is still something that you haven't deployed, uh, we highly, highly recommend that you look into a multi-factor type situation, especially for VPNs. Uh, so if you're if you're doing remote work and people are using VPN to get back, they they 100%, regardless of who you are or what regulatory body you answer to, needs to have a multi-factor solution uh, deployed with it. And then certainly looking at remote desktop solutions, right? So um, people were VPNing in and certainly using remote desktop and and that is perfectly fine you you can do that all day long if if you're set up for that however there are there are more robust remote desktop solutions uh, available so maybe a, a VMware view or a, a, a Citrix uh, type solution there are a number of cloud type solutions where uh, your users can uh, remote you know use a a remote desktop in the cloud uh, we still saw organizations exposing remote desktop directly to the internet, and you should never do that. Uh, there, certainly there are ways that you can secure that, um, but I know one of the things that we look for on a continuous basis is uh, uh, certainly port 3389, which is, which is associated with remote desktop, and making sure that we never see 3389 exposed from our customer base. Uh, that is something that you should probably do as well. So just make sure that you're, you've never, don't ever expose remote desktop uh, directly to the internet. Um, that's just bad. Uh, ransomware is running rampant uh, through the internet, and uh, that's a really good way to get ransomware is to expose um, RDS directly to the, uh, to the internet. Uh, VPN split tunneling, if you don't know what that is. Uh, so if I connect from my house to my company's uh, VPN and split tunneling is on, when I'm surfing the internet, I'm surfing the internet from my house. I'm not surfing the internet from my company. So uh, split tunneling for all of our solutions is disabled, meaning that in a true secure manner for a remote worker, you want their internet access to travel back through the company through the company firewall in a, 
and, and is being inspected by the company policies. So that is the true way to do that. Now, there are some, uh, you know, it, it's a little inconvenient. Uh, so when a user says, well, how do I print? Uh, well, you're gonna need to, you know, directly connect the printer, uh, you know, to, to the device at your, at your house. Um, so, um, you know, we don't, we don't want splint tunneling enabled because, uh, you know, we don't want uh, the device, uh, you know, during that session uh, accessible to an internal network because then if you're VPN in and you're doing your work and you're surfing your internet and you come across something or somebody on your home network gets infected, you could potentially introduce a clear direct stream from your house uh, to the company network and, and, and cause some disruption or spread some infection. So um, VPN split tunneling should be disabled uh, as much as possible. And then we're actually getting uh, towards the end of the of the presentation here. So uh, any any questions that you might have, uh, please put those in there uh, so that we can answer those for you. Um, there will will be a formal Q and A here at the end, but we're we're winding down. All right. So uh, what is this product that Secure Cyber Defense is is going to offer? Um, well, uh, so starting July 1st of 2020, uh, we uh, have this solution uh, currently uh, in testing, and it's and it's proving very successful is a remote worker kit. Uh, so this is actually gonna be a box that we assemble. Uh, it's gonna contain an access point that's pre-configured to VPN back to the corporate firewall. Uh, so this is a great solution uh, for remote workers. Uh, again, this isn't a, this is for everybody thing. This is definitely not a, <laughs> you go buy a remote worker kit for everybody. I mean, certainly if you wanna do that, that's great, but um, you know, there, it'll contain an access point uh, 50, feet, 50 feet of Cat5 and a PoE uh, Fortis switch, eight port. And uh, this access point will be pre-configured to just tunnel back. So instead of having a, uh, a corporate firewall um, at your house, which is, which is you know, it's, it's a big expense and there's a lot to do there. This device is pre-configured, you take it home, you plug it in and it and automatically creates a secure connection back to the company. And then the big benefit of that is you've got a corporate wireless hotspot in your house. Uh, so now there's, uh, there's no VPN client that you need to have. Uh, you can use your laptop and your iPad and your mobile device to just kind of hop right onto the access point and, uh, and multiple devices uh, can now connect back to corporate and access whatever resources you need to access. Multi-factor authentication will be available. Uh, so just in case somebody uh, would find out the password uh, to hop on the corporate wireless, the the, the access point at your house, uh, we can deploy and, and would highly recommend uh, multi-factor authentication. What that will look like is basically the user would be uh, prompted with a screen uh, asking for the, the company username and password and the token code in order to gain access to corporate resources. So we're really excited about this kit. Um, again, it'll come out July 1st. Uh, certainly, if you have, uh, a, you know, this is primarily for Fortinet type technology uh, that we're able to do this. Uh, but this is a uh, this is a great addition. And then if you if you uh, also add that uh, you get a separate if you get a separate internet connection to your a separate business grade connection to your house. I mean, just picture like an executive or somebody you know that that has that type of so they have a separate connection and a wireless access point. Um, they they basically are a branch office and uh, and a a uh, you know a, uh, a a great remote remote office with good bandwidth and uh, and it's it's certainly a productivity booster for sure. Um, so this will be available uh, July first. That is the end of the presentation. I do see the uh, question mark lit up here for me. Uh, will this PowerPoint be shared? Um, so we I, obviously we had some people that said that they joined late. Yes, uh, this presentation will be shared. Uh, so uh, the GoTo webinar system is very nice, where it will actually email everybody shortly, uh, and we'll provide a link to the presentation so that you can have access to this um, as well. So my contact information. Uh, any other questions? Please pile them in here. Uh, so my contact information is on the screen. Uh, you can uh, reach out to us at secdef.com. I also, uh, uh, in the, there are phone numbers there, 24-7, 365. That is the same phone number uh, in, a, in a breach response scenario. Uh, our breach response system is very unique where we put people in your building. 
So uh, most of the time, if, if you have a security issue and you've called your insurance company or, or something, everything's remote. So uh, we're this is very white glove. Uh, so we will show up a team of people to your organization to help you and uh, get you to understand what the situation is and, and how to get through it. So that that is something that makes us unique. Um, but my contact information is here. I really enjoy everyone. Uh, I really thank you and, and hope you have enjoyed. Uh, thank you for coming at lunchtime. I appreciate that. Uh, so we're going to end a little early to make sure that everybody can go hop out and get something to eat. Um, but until then, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your week, and, uh, and thank you for attending. Thanks.